another video. Um, it's winter coming on soon enough. It's actually only the second week of September, but it has cooled down and we're finally getting around to feeding our bees. Our bees, uh, we're carrying a little bit more weight from summer honey than I like to see. You can't ever be certain what kind of honey they've got and whether or not it's the best for wintering. So I left feeding a little later this year so that they would eat up some of their stores. Typically when we open up a hive in the fall time, we don't want to bother them a whole lot. But we have been doing a few little tests to check mites and to check other things. Normally we just take a quick look into the hive to see what, what we should be expecting. And if the bees are relatively calm like this, I see capped honey on the outside edges. The bees are just sitting around. They're not in danger of starving. We wouldn't normally even check this hive other than spot checking for mites. And that's the first thing I'm going to do at this point. Carefully taking out a frame. I don't usually recommend taking one from a center, but I'm being a little lazy. We do a quick look for brood. And you shouldn't be really alarmed if you can't find eggs in September. Often enough, the queen is already shut down, depending on your local conditions. This queen is still laying. I mean, you have cat brood. You have larvae in here, which you won't be able to see. And I can spot some eggs. So the place when we're doing a varroa check, the place you want to take the bees from are right around the brood. Now what you want, you want to avoid the queen, <laughs> you want to get about 300 bees. It's the normal thing. Which is, oh, I don't know, maybe about a cup of bees. I better check to see that the queen's not right here in my face. If you take bees from different parts of the hive, you're going to have less chance of finding the mites. Now the mites, this, this test at this time, um, you might not be the most accurate. All the mites might be in the cells. But there's almost always going to be some mites on the bees themselves and that's what we're checking for. If you were to check later in the year, there would be fewer cap brood and all the mites would end up on the bees. However, we kind of want to know before, uh, before much later because we may have to treat. Typically we haven't been treating in the fall. Our levels have been low enough or non-existent that we it doesn't warrant treating. So uh, you can see how many bees I have here right now. I'm going to take just a few more. While I'm taking out a frame, I am also looking for problems in the brood. I mean, this doesn't look like a particularly nice pattern. Uh, she's hit and miss here. This happened to be one of my my nurse hives they were struggling so it could be that the queen is not the greatest queen uh, queen <laughs> um, but what I want to look for is any signs of disease and this actually all looks healthy uh, no scale no AFB but it's something every time you take out a frame of your brood nest just keep a thought in mind of, of checking for disease I'm going to put it back in. So one thing that that you want to avoid at all costs this time of year is robbing. We put in entrance reducers. Your high bottoms are a little different but uh, more or less the same. So that they have a small opening here or on the edges. They can guard better. The lid has to be down and fitting nicely. So we check around to make sure that there's no, no big gaps where the bees could get robbed out. A little bit of propolis is what they're building up and they'll, a good hive will build up quite a bit of propolis to seal up any little cracks. But it's always nice to make sure everything's tight. So this hive looks pretty good. 
Um, people ask how, how much to feed. Typically we're feeding commercially with these pails and a single like this would probably take two pails depending on on how much uh, weight they're carrying from the summer. I like, sometimes I, I step on a scale with one of these things. This, if you step on a scale, you should be weighing about 75 pounds extra if you just pick it up like this. Now if it's 65, you're kind of taking a big risk that that they're not going to have enough feed. Last year I did winter some through this through the winter at 65 pounds, um, but they didn't do as well as the ones at 75 or 85. I'm gonna do a quick shake on this. These bees are in windshield washer antifreeze, winter strength. Shake it vigorously. If you happen to be uh, Uh, in the Saskatoon area or someplace close, you can bring a sample to me and I can I can do a, a sample uh, and a shake. So what's happening here, the mites are getting washed off these bees. There's a screen between these two bottles and the mites will drop down into the bottom bottle. And this is exactly what I wanna see, not a single mite. Now that's a, just one test. Uh, I'm certainly not going to pretend that there's not a mite in my operation because I know there's going to be some someplace. But with 300 bees or so, you know, you could probably economically, if you've seen three mites on 300 bees, it's not worth treating. But what you want to do is find none. Now to the pails. This pail is filled with syrup right full. It's got a little screen here with some holes. We invert this pail over top of the hive, our little hole that we've cut. And when you first invert it, a little syrup comes out, creates a suction in this pail, and then it won't come out very quickly unless the bees suck it down. So a full pail uh, creates a suction faster. If you only have a half pail, it Gurgles out quite a bit of honey. I am gonna, that's a pale feeder. Syrup, syrup, not honey. Sorry, honey. Sir. Uh, I said honey, but I mean syrup. We're gonna just introduce you a little bit to hive top feeders. These particular hive top feeders were made for, for my nukes, but they work also on top. There's a couple of different designs of hive top feeders out there. Um, but these ones are kind of dual use for me. So I take a look once again. I see quite a bit of capped honey from the summer. I'm not even gonna check this hive. They sound nice to me. Um, and I can't, I can't be expect, or I can't be inspecting for mites on every single hive. So hive top feeders, whatever the design sits on top of the hive. You fill the feed into the top These particular ones use floats. And if you want to come a little closer, you can see that the bees can walk up the front edge here, then onto the float. The float hasn't quite, well, it's coming up now. And then they can feed and bring the syrup down. The beauty of a hive top feeder is it's using the heat from the hive to warm the syrup a little bit, whereas sometimes these pails are quite cold. So hive top feeders, also they take them down faster. Like I can say, there's a couple of different designs. These ones use the float, and just like this, they're ready for winter. Also aiming for uh, 75 or 80 pounds. Ideally, you would have even a little bit more, but that's about it. And still no mites showing. And that's a cut.